Dr. Greg Tajan joins me now, and we're talking about genetic testing for early onset kidney disease. Thank you for being here. Pleasure. Thank so you. before we talk about advancements and your research, I want to back up a little bit to discuss traditionally how was testing and treatment done, and how will that maybe change based on your research? Sure. So the paradigm for testing in kidney stone disease has really revolved around 24-hour urine testing. It's a way we look at the urine chemistries to understand risk factors for why stones developed and then also uh, to identify ways that we can target um, specific medications to reduce the risk and therefore prevent recurrence. And it's important because it's truly very painful for people. It is. Uh, so it's an episodic disease that can occur repeatedly throughout the lifespan. Over the last 20 years, it's happening more and more in young individuals. The age of onset has uh, become much younger. The gender gap has disappeared. But it's also a disorder of mineral metabolism, higher risk of hypertension, hyper, hi, higher risk of fracture, uh, cardiovascular disease. So it's much more than painful episodic events. So your research is twofold. Explain. So. We really seek to understand what's driving this change in the epidemiology of the disease, and then as we unravel these causal mechanisms, really identify new opportunities for diagnostic test development and therapeutic development. So when you look ahead to the future, what would your goal be? So I think as technology has evolved, we have a real opportunity to do targeted genetic testing of individuals with early onset kidney stone disease who have a higher risk of having a monogenic condition. There are now commonly available panels that can be done in the clinic and sent out that can identify many different causes of monogenic disease, including primary hyperoxaluria, cystinuria, distal RTA. Um, and now we have the opportunity to have targeted treatments, particularly with RNAi for uh, primary hyperoxaluria. And that's, I think, one area. Um, that's currently available. Where I think we've reached the boundaries of knowledge for clinical care is in understanding idiopathic kidney stone disease and what new diagnostic testing and therapeutics look like there. And there is a connection potentially to the gut, which you are looking at, that I think not a lot of people have even thought about. Indeed. Uh, so we've discovered that uh, antibiotics are associated with an increased risk of incident kidney stone disease. And then in understanding the sequencing of the gut microbiome and all the associated metabolites, there's definitely perturbations um, in individuals, particularly younger individuals with calcium oxalate stones. And this reduced diversity of the uh, microbiome is reflected in a lot of different ways. There's decreased capacity to produce butyrate, which protects the gut. And if you're missing that, you absorb a lot of those minerals, including oxalate that uh, produce kidney stones. So as we really work to understand this, I think we can identify ways that we can test the gut or the urine uh, in new ways to reveal new causal mechanisms and targets, but also develop new treatments, um, such as restoring or replacing the gut microbiome. It's such an understudied area. It is. And so I feel like this opens the door for many other things potentially to impact the genetic testing for early onset kidney disease, but maybe other things as well. I, I think that's right. I, and I think that's especially true when you conceptualize stones as a disorder of mineral metabolism, um, much more akin to other systemic disorders rather than just a simple episodic painful event. Well, Dr. Tejman, thank you so much for sharing your research with us. Thank you.